Like, you can't get a fresh hall pass? It got to be a wrinkled up, crumpled up one that's been balled up in the corner. <laughs> Love muffins. I was concerned that the New Orleans cast of the Real World Homecoming was not going to give me no material because I already did my stand shout out video about Melissa carrying this, this season. But let me tell y'all something. This latest episode, yeah, honorable mentions are, have to be paid. Honorable mentions have to be done for uh, Miss Mormon USA as well as Matt's so-called contrition over his kind of homophobic stance around his roommate, Danny. I'm Latrice Kelly. Sometimes I do TV show reviews, which is why you're here. I'm just trying to understand, Julie, you really thought that you was gonna thought it out over here at the reunion, which you can call your roommates the old folks home, Shady Pines, or whatever you was calling it, trying to be funny because the rest of their cast just want to come and chill. They came for a little free vacation. They didn't come to see a triple X show between you and Stiff uh, Spence, your husband. Like, y'all are two dorks made in heaven. But they were not there for the uh, front seat of your sex show that you gave out there on the patio at your house with the roommates. There are questions that have been raised by this episode. I would like to like relive these flashbacks that the producers have been showing the cast members. I forgot that Matt was trying to hit on a sister back in the day. Girl, you avoided a hot mess because apparently that boy likes to spread his sperm like Salt Bay out here in these streets. He got like 50, 11 children. And so, Julie was basically hot for Matt and Jamie. Like, she just wanted whoever was going to throw it at her. Let's just be honest. So, Matt wasn't feeling her back in the day, in the 2000s when the show was filmed. When they were talking about, via the flashbacks, who all was crushing on each other in the house, Matt was like, I just wasn't trying to go there with my roommates. Because apparently Melissa was even looking at him, like, with interest. But, okay. Everybody has somebody for them. But Julie was like, well, what was wrong with me? I mean, you remember you were at that club and you were trying to hit on that beautiful um, dark-skinned black lady. Lady, I don't know if she said dark-skinned. I probably might be adding my own little Latrice Kelly spin on it. How and so ever, it was a little hateration in this dancery. I feel like Julie was taking a shot there at Matt. And Matt was like, I'm, I'm just telling you that I wasn't interested in dating a castmate. It wasn't about, I wasn't going to date nobody in New Orleans, period. It was just a safe thing to do. And then Danny chimed in like, yeah, you don't poop where you eat. And that's, that's facts. So speaking of pooping where you eat, I didn't know it was that deep between Julie and Jamie back in the day. I mean, I saw the flirtation the different video packages that they would show, like when they had that little mud fight or whatever, and she was pushing up on him and he wasn't saying no or nothing. And then she kissed him and whatever. So apparently when the show ended, they were an item, but then he basically dismissed it as it wasn't that serious. And in her own way, she was like too saying that as well, that she was just looking for a little hit it and quit it. And even though he was her first. Miss Mormon USA was hot in the pants and uh, he put it on her and more than put it on her, it sounds like, because she said he taught her everything there is to know, basically, and gave her her first O. Oh, Jamie, it's like that? Like, you weren't like, is it like that? So, because, well, kudos to you, Jamie, because apparently, you know, a lot of people ain't getting an O on the first time. I'm just saying, but he came to visit the house, Spence, Julie's now husband, like, y'all couldn't wait. Like, go back to the hotel. Why you got to do it in front of the roommates? Like, y'all are not 20 years old anymore. I guess Spence was mature enough to know about Julie's past and didn't, like, question it. But then the truth comes out that he hadn't really watched the show until, like, two weeks before she came to the homecoming. So, like, has she told her husband that her and Jamie were a thing before this happened? that that was the first, or maybe she just said my first was this person, but he didn't really make the connection that it was one of your roommates from the real world. Messy Julie. So let's get off of Messy Julie for a minute. Let's turn to Matt. So Matt is apparently like a devout Catholic, right? 
And we all know that Danny is the token LGBT person in the house. You know, the real world had to always throw one person in, one sprinkle of this, one little dash of that, one representation of this, because that's how they did it. So he, you know, Danny was, I guess, an affront to Matt's religion and that he didn't believe in homosexuality and still probably doesn't. And then he was backtracking around the fact that he still is homophobic and didn't want to come right out with it. And doesn't want to come out directly to the camera, to the producers doing a confessional to say that he accepts homosexuality. Now, my thing is this. I really don't like when religious people say stuff like love the sin or hate the sin. It's a little bit like when they tell you God bless you after they didn't argue with you or fell out with you or I'm going to pray for you. That's the one I really, to me, is condescending. And to me, it smacks of you're not really following the tenets of your religion if all you got to say is I'm going to love the sinner and I'm going to hate the sin because you don't hate all the sins because you said that says yourself, these, these Catholic folks, y'all don't follow the birth control mandate as close to the letter as y'all do bashing and condemning homosexuality. I just thought that was odd that he brought that up. And I would like to offer too, it's a lot of stuff in the Bible y'all ain't following. Okay, people mix fabrics and materials every day. Y'all eating shellfish. You work on a Sabbath. There's a lot of stuff that y'all cherry pick. Julie's Mormonism in her background was a good kind of like um, parallel between her and Matt. Their stories are similar. And so it's, it's interesting to know that Julie has now grown up and grown out of her faith that she was brought up on. She saw the sexism of Mormonism. She saw the racism in Mormonism and some of the other things she didn't agree with. And she has disavowed her faith, which is, that's a good point to bring us to the current situation that she's liberating and free. Okay. She real free. Okay. She's super free. Okay. She is super free, super freak. Okay. So there's that. But like, I don't like when religious people say stuff like that. It just irritates me to my core because it's condescending, it's rude, it's snobbish, it's, look, it's looking down upon. And I thought y'all religions was against judging people. So I don't like that, Matt. It's kind of still you know, poking daggers at Danny and his life and like kind of discrediting him. And then he's also trying to assert that partnerships or relationships are all about procreation. Like you leave out the fact that there are couples who are barren, who can't have children, who choose not to have children. You mean to tell me every time you lay down with your wife, you was trying to have a child? I mean, obviously, so maybe y'all have only had sex to nine times. I mean, these religious people need to let that shit go. That part about sex is just for procreation. We've already ruled that out. It's a whole bunch of folks having sex just for recreational purposes, okay, and fun. And because they want to. So leave the gay people alone. They ain't bothering you. They minding their business. You know, Danny has already said that he worked with a church that was, you know, pro-LGBT and helped them rebuild when the, the edifice was falling apart. So he is selfless in a way that even though he doesn't identify as religious, he's still like supporting religious organizations that are out there benefiting humanity in other ways. So anyway, that's my soapbox tangent about the religious Matt and his annoying ass. Julie, Julie, <laughs> you really sat up there in that house and told your husband who came by to visit while he's at a conference, met your roommates for the first time, that you were going to give Jamie the, what was she calling it? Red Lotus of Passion bracelet. Oh, I thought about giving it to Jamie, but you know, I thought better of it. Why would you say that to that man? He did not sign up for your foolery, okay? He really did not. He came to see his wife. He was missing you. And you obviously were missing him because you was all up and through Jamie, all up around that man, sitting up under him, trying to get your flirt on, which is fine if you were just going to flirt, but you was doing the utmost. And then going to tell your husband he's got the good porn. Ma'am, ma'am, what, what, what is happening out here this day? I, you are hot in the pants, Miss Hot the Trollop, Miss Mormon USA. We finally get to bring up Kelly. Kelly was like, I need to lead this situation because some of these conversations Julie be bringing up, I'm not really here for it. I'm not featuring her. These folks, husband upstairs building stuff and like, he know I'm down here with Rion. Why is he doing this right now? Anywho, Kelly was like, I'm rest to go. 
y'all on my nerve, especially Julie. Um, but I'm going to work it out, though. I'm going to try to stick with it. Her roommates was like, girl, we know. Just, we know. But like Kelly, girl, you knew that girl was a hot mess before you even came back in that damn house. She said she came in to make good TV, and baby, she is making this TV right now. So let's get to the part about this damn Spotify playlist. Spence, Julie's husband, called her in a tizzy, child. Really upset with her because he discovered their shared playlist on Spotify had a, the title of the, the playlist was Groping. But then when I continued to watch an episode, it said Roping, which sounded like some low-key freaky shit, let's be honest, because Julie is an all-the-way freak. Was she out the closet? She's wearing this freak flat, proudly, loudly, and openly. Now, Jamie is on the playlist. And some of the titles of the songs are a little raunchy, apparently. So, husband, like, was good. Like, what is, what is you doing? What is you doing right now? So, like, Julie was just trying to calm him down. Like, don't panic. Nothing's happening. Nothing's going to happen. But never mind all the roommates in the house. Like, girl, we see what you're doing. We see you and Jamie all booed up in a corner somewhere. And y'all both married. So, what's tea? Y'all seem to be feeling each other's a little bit too much or y'all trying to relive old times, go down memory lane, which Jamie seems to be very like, oh, it's not all that, you know, but Julie definitely is like, that's my friend and I miss him. And when you're, when you're in Wisconsin, come visit and you can come to stay with us. And then when you, we come to Chicago, we can come visit you. Y'all are each other's ex, fuck buddies or whatever you want to call it, Julie, because she definitely called it fuck buddy at one time. But, like, why would you want to be around a man you was getting buck wild with back in the 2000s? Like, no man. No Pam, no turkey, no ham. So, anyway, I feel like her and Jamie do, do have some commonalities. They both are very goofy, silly, and they bring out the playful side in one, one another. Spence seems a little boring, I'll be honest. So, girl, your husband boring. So, that might be what the little missing link is that got you, like, on this sexual course towards like both of y'all breaking our vows basically so they showed us jamie's spouse she seemed a little dry too she even looked a little older i mean maybe she's not she just looked that way see the noise i can't anyway i want to rewind back to matt and danny and matt said he takes ownership over past comments to danny which danny did the same thing like when he had that conversation with Julie when they first got in the house, when somebody makes an apology, it needs to be more than that. You can't readily accept something when you're not ready. And then also when you don't feel a person is really contrite or is really sympathetic of what they did. I don't think Matt is ready to admit that he really don't like gay people. Like he's saying, yeah, we buddies. We both grew up in Georgia. We, we friends and... I've seen this, this the compassionate side of him when he's with a partner. He has, a, you know, I can see gay people having loving relationships. I can see them having positive relationships and I can, I can kind of see where that is valid. But at the same time, I don't think Matt is ready to go on a record and saying I disavow how shitty my thoughts are about LGBT people. So apparently next episode going to be lit because... Julie's husband Spence apparently is gonna tell her she could have a hall pass with Jamie. Jamie, why would you have a hall pass with somebody you already then busted wide open for? Like you can't get a fresh hall pass. It got to be a wrinkled up, crumpled up one that's been balled up in the corner. That seems really weird to me. That something tells me their marriage is a little bit on the shaky ground. Anyway, you know the fact that they were both former Mormons and like Julie said. A lot of times when people leave Mormonism, their marriages tend to fall apart. So something is cooking. And then apparently we're going to focus on, come on, be my baby tonight. Ow. Come on, be my baby tonight. Um, Kind of interesting to see what they're going to pull out storyline-wise around Tokyo to relive. Other than, come on, be my baby tonight. Because I really don't remember... Other than that, what he was given, because he was on that musician kick, and, and I, I really don't know that it worked out, but we'll see. Anyway, I really love the real world. Y'all, I'm telling y'all, that was my jam back in the day. I'm Gen X. That was our show. It was the mother, father, parent of reality TV. They are giving it 
this real world homecoming in New Orleans. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment, and share. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more reviews, TV show reviews, media reviews. I'm trying to get back into this pocket. So I'm going to see y'all on the next one. Toodles. So why are you acting like this? Why they walk so hard over me? That's the other question. But girl, questions. <laughs>